Amen. Amen. So we're talking about no fear. Everybody say no fear. No fear. Okay, okay. That, that was all right for us starting out, but everybody say no fear. No fear, no fear, no fear. One more time, say no fear. no fear. No fear in the battlefield of our mind. And we're going to be dealing with the error of forgiveness, the error of forgiveness. There's no fear in us, in, in, of us, in, in, in our minds, and we're dealing with forgiveness. Amen? Amen? So let's look at Psalms 43. If we can stand our fear as we do, we're going to read the word, Psalm 43. And I got, I got my clock up here. Praise God. And we're going to try to get you and hit you and run. Amen. Not literally hit you, but hit you with the word of God. How many need a good hit from the word? Amen. I know I do. It's the word that keeps me straight. It's the word that helps me be a good husband. It's the word that keeps my soul. So let's read it together. And it says this, clear my name, O God. This is Psalm 43. If you're watching us on Facebook Live or on YouTube, go ahead and type that in the comment section. Clear my, here we go, Psalm 43, the Message Bible. Clear my name, God. Stick up for me against these loveless, immoral people. Get me out of here, away from these lying degenerates. I counted on you, God. Why did you walk out on me? Why am I pacing the floor, wringing my hands over these outrageous people? Give me your lantern and compass. Give me a map so I can find my way to the sacred mountain to the place of your presence. A little louder. Let's do it. To enter the place of worship, meeting my exuberant God, seeing my thanks with a heart, magnificent God, my God. Why are you down in the dumps, dear soul? Why are you crying the blues? Fix my eyes on God. Soon I'll be praising again. He puts a smile on my face. He's my God. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 is in the, 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 the epistles, and then we have in St. John in the gospel, the New Testament, Big John 3, 16 and 17. Let's read that together. It says this, let this mind be in you, which is also Christ Jesus. Now, just think about that. Let this mind. Now, let's go to the next one, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Amen? Let's bow our heads. Father, we just thank you right now for this time of reading of the Word in the Old and New Testament. We thank you, God, that God, that your Word is spirit and it's life. It's truth. And you say that we will know the truth, and the truth will set us free. Free us on today, God, at new levels. God, help us to rise above those old devils <laughs> and let us continue to soar, God. Howard sits down. Holy Spirit, you stand out. Stand up and show out. Anoint these lips of clay that they may declare your truth, that the hearers may be transformed from the inside out. We'll give you the honor, the glory, and the praise. Holy Spirit, we thank you. God, we thank you in advance. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You may be seated if you can. One thing. Everybody say one thing. You know, I always ask you for one. Good to see you in the house, Gabe. Good to see you. Praise God. Uh, one thing. God forgives those who forgive. Everybody say that with me. God forgives those who who forgive. One more time. God forgives those who forgive. You're like, Pastor, you don't know what he or she did to me. Let's read it again. God forgives those who forgive. Matthew 6 and 14 says, for if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will what? Forgive you. I know this is simple, real simple. We're going to get back to Psalm 43. But this is the one thing that I want you to remember. You can type that in, the, in on our Facebook, in our comment section. Amen. Psalm 43. And we read this, and I want to break this down. I did everything not to preach it because there's so much in this. Because you see the psalmist, you see David going through a, a, a conundrum. He's going through a crisis. Has anybody ever gone through a crisis? He's going through some depression. 
David, God's beloved man of God, he is going through a dark space. Have you ever gone through a dark space? There's a lot of people right now that are going through dark spaces, coming out of COVID, looking at their lives at the end of the year, and they're not happy with what they see. They're looking on social media and seeing people going here and going there, and, and, and like people are looking at their lives and saying, where is my life? How many know you're only seeing a snapshot of a person's life on social media? We saw that online this week when we saw that gentleman commit suicide the day before. He had a dancing video where he was smiling and he looked happy. And no way am I trying to trivialize and minimize that DJ. I love him dearly and I love his family. What I'm trying to say is we got to look beyond the surface. God has not called us to be one-dimensional and just be moved by what we see in social media. He's called us to be three full-dimensional beings, body, soul, and spirit, and making sure that we're not only feeding our physical and our soul, but our spirit on a regular basis. Psalm 43 says this. This is, this is David's prayer. He says, clear my name, God. Stick up for me against these loveless and moral people. Ever been, have people on you take, take advantage of you? I love the song by, I think, Jonathan McReynolds. He says, he talks about God deliver me from people. So I love you, but God, people, people, God deliver me from people. Ah, here's the thing, God loves those people because <laughs> he loves everybody. And so what God is doing, he uses them to transform us. He uses the pain to bring out his power in us. He uses the mess in our lives and in the lives of others to develop a message. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor. God is creating a message in you, and I'm reading it every day. Are you with me? The Bible says you are an epistle read by men. It says, get me out of here. See, that's what we want. First thing, Lord, get me out from these lying degenerates. I counted on you, God. Why did you walk out on me? Why am I pacing the floor, wringing my hands over these outrageous people? Ever been there? I did the message, Bob, because it brings it in Martin Day vernacular. See where we are sometime, where David was. Give me your lantern and compass. He's saying, during these times, we need to cry for God's compass. How many of your emotions or your soul will get you in some places where you don't need to be? Are you with me? We can visit some dark places when we're not following God's compass. That has to be a prayer. Been there before, done that. Are y'all with me? So I can find my way to the sacred mountain, to the place of your presence. To enter the place of worship, meet my exuberant God. How many know when you're going through, that's when you need to press into the house of God? How many know when you're sick, that's when you go to the hospital? How many know the church is a hospital? See, sometimes we want to get well and then come to church. No, when you're sick, that's when you press to get healing. How would I look if I had the flu? And then they got what's the, they got the flu, you got COVID out. What's another one? RSV. How would I look and say, I'm just gonna stay home and get well? Not take medicine, don't do anything. I'm just gonna get well. Maybe I maybe it'll just run its course. No. I got to go get some medicine. I got to go to the emergency room. I got to go get some help. And the body of the church is, a, is, is not where we come and gossip about each other. Thank you, Jesus. Because we're, 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 we're a church hospital. We come hurting. We come beat up. We come wounded. But we leave strong. We leave bandaged. We, we leave with a, a little more pep in our step. Are y'all with me? Because we run into the Christ. We run into his spirit, and he strengthens us. Amen? Amen. Then he goes on, I love this, and this is what we have to do. He begins to talk to his soul. He says, why are you down? Sometimes I look in the mirror and I say, how, why are you down? This week, I didn't, uh, the, the week of, of the 11th, didn't realize, I believe our daughter passed on the 11th. So I was like, in a, it's heavy. The 12th, okay, so around the 11th, the 12th, around that time I was just heavy. How many know that was over 20 years ago? How old are you, Lexus? 21 years ago. 
so 22, because you're about to turn 21, right? 22 years ago. She came a year after. She came a year before her. How many know that your body knows the trauma? I forgot mentally the trauma, but my body was just heavy for those three days. And I was like, what's going on? Why am I so heavy? I'm just shaking this stuff off and I'm speaking the word, but why am I so heavy? Because sometimes you have gone through trauma in your life, whether it be a divorce, whether it be a death, whether it be a, a, a sickness, that God's delivered, and, and that your DNA doesn't lie. Your DNA says, you know what? You went through trauma here, and I want you to remember what I brought you through. Are you with me? Not wallow in it, but to remember. And I had to begin to speak to myself. So why are you down? This is why are you down the dumps there? So why are you crying the blues? Fix my eyes on God. Turn your next to neighbor. We got to fix our eyes on God. Now, I understand that. He didn't just say, look. He said, fix. If I fix my eyes on Eliana, she got her hand, she's looking all intelligent with her glass, and I look and I fix my eyes, I'm not just casually looking at her out the side of my eye. I'm looking at her, and I'm fixed, and I see her blinking. I'm counting the blinks. I'm seeing her pretty smile. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm focused, and that's how we have to be with God. We got to get focused. Thank you for letting me use you, E. Okay? We got to fix ourselves, and, 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 and let, let's keep going. It says this. Soon I'll be praising again. He puts a smile on my face. He's my God. Got 10 more minutes. You know what Holy Spirit said? Don't even worry about, I got about, about 10 more slides. No way I'm going to get that. But my thing is, Holy Spirit, give you what you need to get today in the next 10 minutes. Are you getting something out of this? God already knew where we would be in the schedule. He knew it. So I don't have to try to perform him. Amen? How many know when things don't go the way you want them to go? See, this is the object lesson today. You can't always fix it. Sometimes you just got to flow with it. Turn to somebody and say, say, neighbor, you look great. But you got to let go and let God have his way. And there's something about us where we don't want to lose control. I mean, even right now, I'm battling inside. I'm like, God, I got 10 more slides. They need what you gave me. But God says, I'm in control. Because in our mind, we have a plan that we think God wants to do. That it should work just like this. How many know, Wesley? How many know, Alexis? It doesn't always work just like that. Are y'all with me? And we got to yield. <laughs> I heard one person say, we make plans and then God laughs. <laughs> the scripture says in Proverbs, many are the plans of a man's heart, but God's purpose will prevail. These are the times when we fix our eyes on God and we say, Lord, let your purpose prevail. So soon I'll be praising again. See, see, David said in another psalm, I believe to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. In dark times, you got to believe to see. He says, how can we sing in a strange land when all this is going through? I'm in a dark place. But I believe to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. He puts a smile on my face, and he's my God. Now, one thing that came to me is this, and I'm going to hit this real quickly. Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith. How many of people are watching us as we walk through this faith? And we're not performing. We're just, we're, we're, we're relating. We're, 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 this, is a real, this is real to us. It's not a performance. It says what? Let us what? Let us what? Let us what? Strip off every weight. Let us do what? Every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up, and let us in, let us run with endurance the race God has what? Set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on what? Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding his shame. Now he is seated in the place of honor besides the God of throne. But focus on that first verse. We got to lay some things away. One of the biggest things I found that brings depression and heaviness in our life is unforgiveness. Everybody say unforgiveness. Yes, I'm going to be talking about the F word today. 
I'm talking about the F word today. Yes, the real F word that brings power and grace. The F word is forgiveness. That's what this life. Forgiveness is for you. Unforgiveness, unforgiveness is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to get sick. When it's actually killing you, it's toxic. When people do you wrong, it's important to release them and let them go. Now, it doesn't mean that you have to invite them in your space and be close to them anymore, but it means that you have to release them. You say, well, pastor, they've done some bad things to me. You don't know what they did to me. I don't have to know, but I know what God has done for you. I know what God has done for me. And I've done some bad things, but God forgave me. And it's the grace of God that I'm standing before you today. See, C.S. Lewis said it this way. <laughs> Forgiveness is a beautiful word until you have something to forgive. Do we agree with that? I mean, it, it sounds pretty and perfect. And you're like, yeah, pastor, that's good, but let you go through. Let somebody do you wrong. You look pretty today, honey. Matthew 6, I'm talking to my wife. I'm sorry. Matthew 6, 14, 50 says, for if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. So when we don't forgive, we become ineligible for God's forgiveness. We stop the flow of God in our lives. We do it because God's a God of free will. He still keeps you. He still gives you life. But he's like this. He's a father saying, I want to give you so much more. But you're pulling away from me because I live in forgiveness. I live in that place. Understand this. You can't give forgiveness unless you receive forgiveness from Christ. You can't give what you don't possess. Only the forgiving can truly forgive. Ephesians 4 and 32 says, Be kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake have forgiven you. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Understand this. When somebody's done you wrong and you don't see it, but it's wrong, understand you've done wrong. Grace is deliberate action to give something good to someone who doesn't deserve it. Let me say that again. Grace is a deliberate action to give something good to someone who doesn't deserve it. Did we deserve grace? No, but he gave it to us. 2 Corinthians 5, 21, for we have made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him and forgave us our debts as we forgave our debtors. Now, I have one thing about Jesus. He never let the offense determine whether or not he would forgive someone. Jesus was able to separate the person from the sin. Did you hear me, saints? Jesus was much more concerned about the person than the action because Jesus loves the sinner, but he hates the sin. Jesus trusted his father enough to be able to forgive long before Judas ever betrayed him. Did you ever think about that? I mean, he let Judas, he, he knew Judas was going to betray him. It says, and if, uh, if you look at uh, John, just in the chat, John chapter 6, he talks about, I called all of you, and there's one of you that's going to betray me. And meanwhile, not only did he have this guy with him, walking with him, living with him on a daily basis, he had him carrying his money. He was the treasurer. You know, that would be too much for some of us. But he trusted his father enough to take care of it. Why? Because guess what? What does God say to us? Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. We got to walk in that same mindset. Amen? Ephesians 1 and 3. Well, let me just, let me get, I'm going to skip to this part because I want you to understand this. Get this. Everybody say this with me. Forgiveness, Forgiveness. is a decision and not a process. I've heard people say this to me more and more. I'll be talking to him about forgiveness. Well, you know, I got to get there. Forgiveness is a decision. Just like you decided to sit down. Just like you can decide to walk away. Just like you can decide to wake up in the morning. Just like you can decide to go. It's a decision. Why would you prolong your healing? Why would you prolong your deliverance? Now, I've gone through some things in my life. Amen? I had to, I had to forgive those people in the hospital for hiding those records after my daughter passed. I know what it feels like to be upset and angry. 
but I had to release them. But I didn't get my deliverance until I forgave. Are you with me? And my peace. I'm telling you, forgiveness work. It's a decision, not a process. Understand this. When we forgive, we link. When we don't, when we view forgiveness as a process, we link it to an offense. When we link forgiveness to an offense, we place ourselves in a position of having rank, which requires a focus to remain on the offense. What do we do? So we get so focused on the offense that we can't see the change or deliverance that needs to occur. And then we start ranking the sin. Well, they don't need to be. They did this. They, they, they can't be forgiven. But what, we, what, what do we read in Romans 3 and 23? All fall short, fall short of the glory of God. See, it was easy for me to judge my spouse and say, hey, she, she doesn't deserve to be forgiven. She did this. I told her this. I told him this over and over and over again. But then God looks at me and say, hey, how many times have I told you something you didn't do it? And how many times have I forgiven you? But yet you have a short fuse. Yet you're ready to give up on your kids. Yet you're ready to give up on your spouse. Yet you're ready to give up on your friends because God is requiring forgiveness out of you. See, how when we view forgiveness as a decision, we move the focus off of the offense and it loses power over us. Did y'all get that? It loses power over us. Now, I just want to give you evidence, and I'm going to close with this. One of the hidden keys of forgiveness. I found that the quicker we find forgiveness is the quicker we find freedom. Did you get that? You see, Jesus forgave ahead of time, and he chose to pre-forgive. That shows us his nature. Jesus forgave us before we... <laughs> Before we even sinned against them, we were in his heart. And I'm going to look at this in Ephesians chapter 3. And this is a long scripture, but I'm going to read it to you. And I'm closing with this. This is my closing. And I got exactly two minutes. I'm doing good. Say, great job, Pastor. Here we go, 3 and 14. Here we go. It says, how blessed is God. I want you to see the foreknowledge of God that he forgave us said, how blessed is God. I'm in the Message Bible. And what a blessing he is. The Father, our Master, Jesus Christ, takes us to the high place of blessings in him long before he laid down the earth foundation, before he made the earth. He had us in mind and settled on us as the focus of his love to be made whole and holy by his love. Long, long ago, he decided to adopt us into his family. Do you get this? He made us family through Jesus Christ. What pleasure he took in planning this. He wanted us to enter the celebration of his lavish gift giving by the hand of his beloved son. Because of the sacrifice of the Messiah, his blood poured out on the altar, the cross. We are free people, free of penalty and punishments, chalked up by all our misdeeds. And not just barely free either, abundantly free. Not just barely free, but abundantly free. He thought of everything, provided for everything we could possibly need, letting us in on the plans he took. Such a delight in making. He set it all out before us in Christ, a long-range plan in which everything would be brought together and summed up in him. Everything in deepest heaven, everything on planet earth. It is in Christ that we find out who we are and what we are living for. Long before we first heard of Christ and got our hopes up, he had his eye on us, had designs on us for glorious living, part of the overall purpose. He's working out in everything and in everyone. Verses 13 and 14, it is in Christ that you once, you heard the truth and believed it. This message of your salvation found yourself home free, signed, sealed, and delivered by the Holy Spirit. This down payment from God is the first installment on what's coming, a a reminder that we will get everything God has planned for us, a praising and a glorious life. Understand this, the quicker we forgive is the quicker we find freedom. Jesus forgave us before we sinned against him. We need to forgive others. Again, it goes back to this. God forgive those who forgive. 
It's so simple. All we got to do is do it. What do we say over and over? Thank you for giving me this experience. It's so simple, but sometimes it's so hard when we try to do it in ourselves. Turn to your neighbor. Like one last time, say, neighbor, touch their hand. Give them a fist bump if they don't want to be touched. Just say, say, hey, let it go. Let it go. Don't hold on to this thing. Don't take it into the new year. God is bringing this message forth. He changed the message. I was going to talk about the basket, about the breakthrough and how God is going to raise up millionaires in this place. And God changed the message yesterday, 24 hours ago, and I was up all night <laughs> to give you this. Let it go. Amen. Stand to your feet, everybody. Come on. Father, we just thank you right now for every person under the sound of my voice. We let it go. We don't sweat the small stuff. We choose during these holidays not to have stupid arguments. God, we choose <laughs> not to worry about the things that don't really matter. But we will be people of truth, we're people of love, and people of grace. Help us to walk in all three of those things, God. Because it's your mercy, it's your grace, and it's your truth that's changed us. I pray for any person that, Lord, that may be struggling emotionally, physically, or mentally in any way, shape, or form right now. We speak healing over their minds, healing over their hearts. Let them know that they're loved by you, Father. In Jesus' name. Jesus name. Repeat after me, saints. We're going to just declare and rededicate to God. And if you're at home and you don't know the Lord, you can pray this prayer with us. Say, Dear Lord, Dear Lord. come into my life. I realize I'm a sinner. And I need a Savior. Jesus Christ, come into my life. Direct it. Be my Lord and my Savior. I receive your gift of the Holy Spirit. Fill me right now with your divine control. Convict my heart of sin. And Lord, convince me to walk in your way. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Give God some praise. And here we go. Y'all, let's stand up. We'll do our declarations. As we receive today's offering, we are believing the Lord for jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits, sales and commissions, favorable settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, Debts paid off, expenses decreased, blessing and increase. Thank you, Lord, for meeting all of my financial needs, that I may have more than enough to give into the kingdom of God and promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I am filled with the knowledge of God's will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. His will is my prosperity. God delights in my prosperity. He gives me the power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant in the earth. I immediately respond, respond in faith to the guidance of the Holy Spirit within me. I'm always in the right place at the right time because my steps are ordered of the Lord. God has given me all things that pertain to life and godliness, and I'm well able to possess all that God has provided for me. God is the unfailing, unlimited source of my supply. My financial income now increases as the blessings of the Lord overtake me. Do y'all believe that? Yeah. Okay, speak that over yourselves, amen. How many know this, hey, we're going to end this year strong, praise God, and how many expecting greatness in this new year? How many expect an increase? Begin to speak it over your house, speak it over your life, speak it over your finances. Here's the second part. As I give, it is given, given unto, unto me. me. Good, Good measure, measure pressed, pressed down, down shaken together, together, and running, running over. over. I honor the Lord with my substance and, and the first fruits of my increase. increase. My, my barns, barns are filled, filled with plenty, plenty and my, my presses burst forth with new wine. wine. I'm, I'm like a tree planted by the rivers, rivers of water. water. I, I bring forth fruit in my season. My leaves shall not wither. And whatever I do will prosper. The because grace of God, God even makes my mistakes to prosper. I am blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed coming in and blessed going out, blessed in the basket, blessed in the store. My bank accounts, investments, health, and relationship flourish. The blessing of the Lord overtakes me in all areas of my life. The blessing of the Lord, Lord makes me truly rich 
and he adds, adds no, no sorrow with, with it. it. Come on up here with me, Lady T. If you need to swipe, hold your offering up. Father, we just thank you for our proclamation and declaration before your presence. We sow seed, God, by faith. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Come on, in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Come on on YouTube. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen and amen. You may bring your seed up. The swipe is here.